Under Resources, I also found the text The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is an American classic that has been simplified in this version so that students are able to read it. The texts are available on the website chapter by chapter so that they can be downloaded and used in class. With these types of texts available to students and teachers all over the world, one can imagine a teacher in Africa looking on a website finding a chapter of Huckleberry Finn and planning to use it as part of her teaching materials for the day. That same teacher in Africa might choose the simplified version of Huckleberry Finn from the American English website, but she also might go to another website. There's one called the Guttenberg Project that collects books that have been written and used and enjoyed for many years all in one website for users to read. Those two websites are just two of the hundreds and thousands of websites available that have reading materials that might be used for reading class. With this wealth of opportunity for reading in English, we need to ask, what should a teacher do? What should a teacher choose? It is clearly time to bring in our reading expert to talk to us more about reading and how people learn to read. Professor Slater researches literacy, which means the ability to read and write. She taught English speaking in Japan, and there she discovered the importance of reading. She found that there was an interplay between spoken and written language. In other words, they were connected. One helped the other. I asked Professor Slater how she became interested in reading, and this is what she said. How did you get interested in reading? Well, I've always been interested in teaching what we often call language arts in primary and secondary schools. But when I was working towards becoming a school teacher, I fell in love with linguistics, and that's the direction my life went in. After finishing a bachelor's degree in that subject, I went to Japan to teach English. Much of my work there focused on oral communication, but what I found really interesting was the interplay between spoken and written language. At that time, I was noticing the role of written language in the acquisition of spoken language by adults. Students wrote down almost everything new that, new that they heard so that they could review it and study it and hopefully learn it. And of course, they frequently wrote down what they heard rather than the correct English spelling, and they used the Japanese syllabary, their spelling system, to put the words on paper. And of course, studying it from that system resulted in very strange pronunciations because not all English words follow the Japanese phonological rule system. My own experience trying to learn the Japanese language really reinforced the differences between reading and decoding. I found it was quite easy to decode Japanese, at least when the syllabary was used, such as it, such as it is in children's books and learner textbooks. But this decoding differs hugely from reading, in which meaning making plays a critical role. I was a terrible reader because my vocabulary was so bad. My prior experiences learning Spanish showed me the same thing. As I could ma manipulate the grammar well enough and decode and pronounce the words very well, I really couldn't read very well. Meaning for me was a huge challenge. These experiences got me thinking about what literacy really is and started me on a path to study ways to help ESL students hone their literacy skills. Decoding is part of the literacy process, of course, but literacy is much more the ability to interact with text, usually written text, with comprehension. And helping students develop literacy, therefore, is helping them make connections between the text and their own background knowledge, or worlds. This knowledge is knowledge about the content and the world, but it's also about how language is used to construct text. In my Japanese experience, I felt illiterate. I could not interact in the way I wanted to. I could not feel part of the society there. I could not, could not always understand what was happening in other areas of the world. Thus, I was 
falling behind as a citizen of the world because of my literacy skills or lack of them.